how I said to leave this say that we tried, we tried, leave the last toast for the ride, for the hope is alive with fire, steady burning the line, steady burning the line, the line, the line, the that's why you ain't see no motherfucking tear in my eyes, no, I couldn't even say that we tried, Said he's burning the light. Now we didn't even try. Now we didn't even try. <laughs> Thank you.
because at NorCal Boys Fest, it's time for Merch Madness. Look at all this merch for you to buy now. We got buttons. Look, they're all shiny. Logo patches. Cover those holes. We got masks. Cover your face, you filthy plague rats. We got the awesome Avalanche Oscillator Pedal Kit. Tiny parts unsuitable for small children. This year's compilation CD. It fucking shreds. We got past year's compilation CDs. We have so many, nobody wants them. All orders accompanied by a highly collectible NorCal Noise Fest postcard. The show already happened. They're useless. Buy it all now at NorCalNoiseFest.square.site before it's all gone. Hi, I'm East Dam. I made this year's NorCal Noise Fest face masks. When you get yours, you'll notice that the knot is exposed. I left it that way so that you can untie it and retie it to make it looser or tighter so that the mask fits your face better. If the knot is already in a good spot, then just tighten it and you can shimmy it back into the fabric so that, you know, it looks nice. And then you bunch up this fabric on both sides and then put it on your face. And then when it's on, you'll notice that it fits good if there's no gaps. So no gaps and you're good. Features that we normally associate with aquatic animals, uh, one really big one is the nose of a Spinosaurus, which you can already look at a Spinosaurus's head and say, oh, that kind of looks like a crocodile. Well, it has these little dots on the skull and crocodiles have that too. And what it is, is their nerve endings. So a crocodile has a very sensitive end of its snout. And the reason for that is they are able to detect when a fish is swimming by so they can snatch it as quickly as they can. So we already had a lot of evidence that suggested Spinosaurus was a swimming dinosaur. And now we have just that much more. And it has a really cool, interesting tail that we've never seen before. I even, uh, one source or what one news article that I saw said, we now have evidence that it had webbed feet, which would be really interesting. That's not something we've ever seen before, but I didn't, they didn't like cite where they heard that or anything. So maybe they got that wrong or something. <laughs>
Thank you for listening to Null Terminated by Scrunt Scrunt. This was for NorCal Noise Fest 2020. Effectively, Null Terminated is a composition created by machine listening and concatenative synthesis. Essentially, the machine, the computer, listens to the sounds created by my mouth in videos, such as <laughs> emulations of noise tracks with my mouth, and then tries to replace those sounds with sounds from a very large database of sounds. So I have 40,000 sounds, 30,000 of which were generated using software created by my graduate student Amir Salami, who is making drum synthesizers automatically. So essentially the computer listens to the sounds and then looks into the database for similar sounds and replaces them.
using a variety of methods. So thank you for uh, listening to Null Terminated, and I hope you enjoy the rest of NorCal Noise Fest. Hello. Hey. Hey. Welcome. It's day two of NorCal Noise Fest, man. We're at NorCal Noise Fest day two. Hey, you know, uh, check it out. I'm I'm at the Cafe Colonial. That's I'm here at the at, at the Cafe Colonial, and you can hear the traffic going by and stuff. And I wish the rest of you were here. I wish we were all here at the Cafe Colonial where I am, where we would normally be right now for NorCal Noise Fest starting here in the afternoon. But I'm here. I came to hang out with you guys from Cafe Colonial. Uh, gosh, we, those were some great sets we just saw. Some cool videos. That set from Ecuador. Oh, man, that was wicked. Um, it's been a swell day so far. Last night was great. I hope everybody's going to hang out and have a good time in the chat today. Hey, I want to welcome the people that are listening on the radio as well. We have the DFM in Amsterdam, the DFM.nu. Uh, you can tell your friends if you're not able to do the YouTube thing, if you don't want to do video, you can like listen, stream us all day. We're, listening, we're streaming live on the DFM.nu. That's www dfm dot n u uh, and you can find that on the web uh, thank you for letting us stream there today uh, we have a live performance happening now that's coming to us from Florida uh, it's coming from far away and it, it's an interactive performance it has like uh, interactive parts isn't that right James that's right yep I'm James from Minus Minus in St. Pete, Florida. James from Minus Minus in St. Pete, Florida. Man is joining us for NorCal Noise for today. And he's got this interactive programming that he's going to let, let us happen with right now. And uh, it's going to be super duper cool. Uh, you guys can play with it. So not only are you going to get to play in the chat room, but there's going to be a new URL that James is going to give you that you can go to and interact with his set live as it happens here from your cow noise fest hey my name is lob uh, look check out my bitch new shirt it's cool huh look i got a button it's shiny um i'm at north cow noise fest at cafe colonial i wish you guys were here um i'm gonna let this go james are you ready to play man let's do it like friends and neighbors boys and girls please put your hands and feet together and stare at the screen and give it up for minus minus from st pete's florida Let me get myself out of here. Boom. Thank <laughs> you. 
overalls and they would go door to door and sign up people. But they weren't going to let the Klan just sit on the front porch and shoot at them. They said, fuck that, we shooting back. from the bell, bell of a gun. And so, as many bombs as they can point at whatever foreign country that it plans to control, is readiness and willingness to take this area. against Africa, portraying it as this third world place to be. This has been the number one place that people have been uh, siphoning resources from for 500 years. Power comes from the bell, bell of a gun. most gangster battle you can be in is the battle against the system. That's why we bang on the system. Oh, Session that equal to damn that's and that like <laughs> Thank you.
I must teach you to think about everything. I must teach you that there is a reason for everything you do, that you must find that reason. If, for example, and now I will be personal, I'm afraid, but I mean it in the best possible way. If I were your teacher, and I knew that you were beginning to wonder what you were doing in school in the first place, and what waited for you outside, what good was it to be here since you, nothing that happened to you here prepared you for outside. Knowing your bitterness, and not trying for a moment to pretend it is not justified, I have yet have to suggest to you that the problems that you face, you will have to make them personal. And then I would ask you very rude questions. For example, I would ask you, I would ask you to ask yourself, why? To come back again, this is a very small example of what I mean, to the war between society and thought. It is your responsibility to understand that the standards by which you are confronted and by which many of you are visibly and obviously victimized, and others of you, not so obviously, but equally victimized, are not the only standards in the world. The virtues to which we all, in one way or another, aspire, our comfortable life, are not the only virtues. I come from a very poor family, and there's a vast amount of vitality, which is a very definite virtue, to be found in those circumstances. I would beg you to insist to fight with me, and not let me get away with anything. No matter how I may sound, I am really only mortal, and though I love you very much, and feel responsible for you, I'm not always right. We depend on each other, the old and the young, to learn from each other. I would beg you, to ask me why, for example, the history books are the way they are. And I would beg you to force me to answer if you asked me what relevance your education had for concrete problems such as getting an apartment, moving from one, time, one part of town to another. I would bow you, I would force me, I would put me on the spot, ask me the most difficult questions that you can. And I will not be able to answer them. But my responsibility is to hear them. And when you ask your question, you any question, you begin to know more than anything. Because once you begin to understand them and master them, you will see the inevitability of revolution. Not only the inevitability of revolution, but you will see the inevitability of victory for the struggling masses around the world once you understand the scientific principles of revolution. Personally changed the economy in the last 20 years. So I would say that people who say hip hop is violence, I would say let's start with the real violence starters. Let's start with the three major Abrahamic religions and let's do away with their books. Let's start with governments and geo war and politics. Let's do away with our leaders. So after we get down the violent scale of all the things that create real violence to get to music, it'll be easy to do hip hop. People in hip-hop won't do the same thing you do. Talk shit about politics, smoke weed, and they don't rush. We're in a war. And key to this war is a war of ideas. The war of ideas. You have to believe in your freedom in order to win it. If you don't want freedom, you can't have it. If you don't strike out for freedom, you can't have it. If you don't believe that you should
I would say let's if stop you don't with want freedom, you can't Politics, smoke. overalls and they would go door to door sign the communists have many things in their arsenal for the conquest of the United States of America they have a master music plan and for our high school students it's directed specifically to them through beat music because it's the type of music that will cause them to riot to destroy and to rebel horrific thing for the local scene because obviously live music is based around venues. So far I've heard of two warehouses that got evicted in the last 24 hours. There's a lot of spaces in Hollywood and LA that are very special that are being torn down and repurposed. I heard this place is gonna get demolished. More than ever it's important for us to have safe spaces for artists, creators, thinkers, activists. It's a particularly tough time for experimental music right now in LA. I mean there's so much great stuff going on. People are making their own instruments, people are creating their own events, people are really trying to create their own society. Cal Noise Fest, it's KDVS Radio here to tell you that we are officially back on the air with limited live music and public affairs programming. KDVS is a student-run, community-driven, non-commercial, alternative, freeform radio station located in Davis, California. Be sure to tune in to 90.3 FM or kdvs.org on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. for music, news, interviews, and everything in between.
I take the, I think we all, all, all three of us take recorded music a little bit more seriously than we do like live performance. So like we're all sort of like recorded based, recording based artists. And that's kind of where like the conceptual stuff and like, the, you know, the, the kind of like, um, yeah, the thematic stuff kind of comes out as like in the recordings. Uh, it's definitely not like any other band I've been in or that I've seen, you know, like I don't like there's not really the traditional sort of roles and divisions of, you know, creative labor. Um, and we all kind of we all kind of contribute, not necessarily the same type of material, but like I feel like each part that we bring to it is equally sort of, you know, important. Like Marcy said, none of us really occupy like a particular role. Like there's not one person that always does percussion or someone that always does melodic or whatever. Um, but I think we all have very different approaches to how we approach each of those elements. So like my contribution of percussion would be very different from Marcy's just based off of the hardware we use and the way that we process the sound. The vision for the recordings, you know, is to kind of like, you know, explore possible worlds like different locations and space and time like it's kind of uh it's definitely more of like a textural thing i met ben like about just a little bit over a year ago because i think he'd heard one of my solo releases and you know i'd heard the album that he just dropped and you know we liked each other's music so we linked up and i think we i mean maybe maybe done things a bit differently but i feel like it kind of happened almost by accident because like i was playing a solo show at the Jones in Davis, like in early November, and Ben was helping me mix, and we kind of we kind of realized like we had pretty good stage chemistry. So like we started like kind of you know like having more like jam sessions together. And and you know we got on pretty well and started you know rehearsing together, doing different recording stuff together, and then um, Parrish and I yeah we started doing uh, like recording sessions at the uh, in Studio A at KDBS together. Um, and I didn't, I didn't actually know that Parrish was um, a musician. We, he actually came to the show that was at the Colony um, and said that like he knew how to use pure data. And I was like, uh, you know, what? Like, how do, I, I, I've never heard anything like this before and you know how to do that stuff. So like we started rehearsing together and it was like, my mind was blown. You know, we played a few shows, but I think a lot of them were sort of short notice and we really wanted to build uh, something a little more cohesive and I think just the environment of NorCal Noise Fest was like the perfect place to do that. For NorCal Noise Fest for sure we're just sort of trying to um, again exchange material with one another and try to make something that's really cohesive and that sort of pulls together like what we've all been working on on our own time but in terms of what people can expect like for the the festival I mean I think that it probably won't be so far off from like, you know, Nina Spears recorded material as well as Marcy and Parrish's recorded material. I'm sure that it'll probably be, it'll take elements from each of them and probably just tr sort of try to mesh it together and, you know, try to make something, uh, you know, something cinematic, uh, something that, you know, kind of um, is like a convergence of, you know, our different interests, both like conceptually and aesthetically. I think I think joining Noise Fest is pretty cool because like I think like the few run-ins we've had with it have introduced us to a lot of really cool people and a lot of like interesting artists. The fact that we're even involved is incredible, and that we get to, you know, perform alongside all, all of these like incredible acts that you know. And like you said, you know, it's kind of like a, a family reunion. You know, the good thing about um, what's going on right now, the fact that we can that we can do, you know, do these things online is that it's a chance for people who are more recording oriented, um, you know, to have a chance to sort of like premiere recordings. Like, I mean, I think that's a really cool thing. As much as we'd all like to have like the visceral experience of being in the same room as the performers and all that, um, I, I think there's a lot of untapped creative potential in everything being virtual. I was thinking about the, la you know, the, the audio waffle that we played and like I was really surprised because I mean with most like online things that I've been to, you know, what I would have expected was for 
you know, people to be for performing and, you know, for like the chat box to be like relatively quiet because we're all concentrating and like, you know, maybe people would say a few words, but I mean like people were really, really interacting with one another in like a really constructive and like kind and loving way. And I was really surprised by that. And even though we're all in different places, it still felt really communal and it still felt like what I would have expected.
on the road again. Here I am, just on the road again, hanging out with all my Noise Fest friends. Hey, what are you guys doing? Welcome back. It's NorCal Noise Fest. I'm on the road. I'm hanging out. I, I was, you know, at Cafe Colonial earlier, and now I'm on my way home. Um, I'm hoping to get some lunch soon. Hey, but, uh, damn, we've had some great sets. That trip through the Redwoods was, with uh, Major Tinnitus was bitching. And, uh, you know, we've got listeners hanging out with us from in Amsterdam cruising around. And, uh, we're just, you know, doing the world tour today. we got people from all over the world. Today, we're, now we're going to get into Oregon. We're headed into Oregon, uh, hang out with my, uh, my most excellent brother, uh, you know, because I'm Rob Istigan. And I'm Austin Rich. And I'm Austin. Dude, but no, you're, you, dude, this is going to be mini mutations, and I'll have to talk about that later. So, um, but dude, this is, this is Austin Rich. He does this project, Mini Mutations. You'll see him later again. He'll make it more appearances with the Noise Stallions. We'll do a set later. But I'm going to get out of the way and let him do his thing, because his thing is rad. And uh, it's so plunderphonic fun. And it's going to be all in your face. Please give it up for my brother in craziness from Salem, Oregon, Mini Mutations. Right here at NorCal Noise Fest 2020. Oh, my God, Hello, NorCal Noise Fest. Thank you so much for uh, letting me in and uh, letting me uh, do a little something fun. Uh, and now, uh, you know, let's uh, get the party started. I don't understand. Some factions of our society destroy public faith in constituted law and authority. These are strange times, my friend. anywhere. That's the sole reason for their existence. Does the 
support law and order. I'm familiar with the claim. You ought to be grateful, man. existence and hasn't got better friends anywhere that's the sole reason for their existence to support law and order I'm familiar with the claim police brutality well, you ought to be grateful man. and do the job. Paul, I'll say this. We want help. We welcome help. We're getting help from legitimate groups and responsible citizens. Now, that doesn't include people who yell spy every time they hear an accent or who look under the bed at night for a seditionist. It excludes nuts, Paul. The guy who sees an anarchist and every kid with long hair. It excludes the department. Patriotism got a corner on the market. Civil rights, they got them all. Protesters, shoot them all down. Now that may be your philosophy, Paul, but it's not mine. brutality. Civilization, ancient and wicked. Have you ever seen this before? No. Civilization, ancient and wicked. Have you ever seen this before? No. Why is everything so neglected? Why is everything so neglected? Oh, it's a sign of the times. This kingdom is under a curse, and the city is in despair. And everyone goes around muttering, Call no man happy who is not dead.
hear the term police brutality used and you attach some gruesome picture to it. Policemen do get out of line sometimes. Yes, sir, they do. Policemen do get out of line sometimes. Yes, sir, they do. Police brutality. You always hear someone talking about police brutality. What is police brutality? Rudeness, undue force, neglect of duty, or whatever. Police brutality. Police brutality. Policemen do get out of line sometimes. Yes, sir, they do. You hear the term police brutality used and you attach some gruesome picture to it. Amoral, incompetent, and unfit for command. Defund. Civilization, ancient and wicked. Have you ever seen this before? <laughs> Why is everything so neglected?
Hashtag defund the police. Defund. 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 Hashtag defund the police. Defund. Everything a policeman does. Defund. Everything a policeman does, police brutality. Defund. 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 Everything a policeman does. Defund. Hashtag defund the police. underclass of our city trapped in the wreckage of neighborhoods which were once so prized communities which we failed to defend which we have surrendered and if this disaster demands anything of us it demands that we say enough enough to the fact that these neighborhoods are not saved or are beyond the saving enough to this administration's indecisiveness and lethargy the addicts who go untreated the working men and women who every day are denied a chance at economic freedom. Enough to the crime which every day chokes more and more of the life from our city. And the thing of it is, if we don't take responsibility and step up, not just for the mistakes and the miscues, but for whether or not we're going to win this battle for our streets, if that doesn't happen, we're going to lose these neighborhoods and ultimately this city. Ever. If we don't have the courage and the conviction to fight this war the way it should be fought, the way it needs to be fought, using every weapon that we can possibly muster, if that doesn't happen, well then we're staring at defeat. Because we have one big problem in selecting police officers. What's that? 
we have to recruit from the human race. For the moment, there is sufficient cowardice, sloth, and mendacity down there on Earth to last forever. For the moment, there is sufficient cowardice, sloth, and mendacity down there. Experience taught me that life is quite tragic enough without my having to write about it. answers go, the kind you're looking for. I'm afraid we didn't come up. Hashtag defund the police. staff members from his 16-hour day to show us some of the many items that you can own if you visit wtbc.bandcamp.com. Watch as he carefully unpacks zines full of poetry, fiction, and art. Why not own one of these handsome lathe-cut records with music by Many Mutations, Half-Eye, and The Mysterious Shot Reverse Shot, publications wrapped in vellum. CDs packaged in unusual and gratifying ways. Tapes, stickers, patches, buttons, and t-shirts. Music by the Olsen Twins Ghostlight Ensemble. Death Mutations, Fast Awakening. It just goes on and on. Now we better let him put all this stuff away. Remember, if you break it, you buy it. WTBC Industries. Experimental music, like Grandma used to make. I do this on the radio as well as in front of audiences, so show kind of fits in both categories. Uh, and it's a lot of um, sample heavy, um, kind of, um, I've been calling them negative jams uh, sometimes uh, when uh, I want to really wear my heart on my sleeve. I, I think that uh, while um, you can tell where I'm coming from, uh, certainly, uh, I'm starting to get to this point where I'm pursuing some of my own ideas it in different directions. Certainly as uh, time has gone on, field recordings and the sounds of nature have become more important to my compositional time and uh, structure. I feel like nature has a lot more to say to me now than like cities and samples and things like that. But being offered a chance to be a DJ at KWVA in 
Gene sort of sealed that path where I kind of left music was certainly still part of it. I was occasionally jamming with friends, but really I was DJ. That kind of opened the doors to records on top of each other on the air and then trying to be more clever with that and then suddenly kind of realizing probably around 2017 uh, that I could do this in front of people. Like it wasn't a lot of difference between what these experimental shows were putting on that I was seeing and what I was doing on the radio and I was like wait a minute these are kind of the same thing. There's so much parallel between like a, a comedy open mic and a uh, experimental noise show. As soon as like I have a microphone in front of me I'm already like looking for the funny thing I could say. <laughs> uh, and so uh, Mini Mutations just kind of wears that on its sleeve a little bit too. It's kind of like yeah we'll just the jo- let the jokes fall where they may. <laughs> And, it, and that was the one big concern this year, as soon as uh, Friday the 13th happened, where I was like, oh, are we going to have best this year? <laughs> uh, so I'm so glad that it's actually happening in this virtual space, because I think a lot of us have gotten to this point where this is like a community we depend on. Someday we'll get back to that. This year we're doing something completely different that's going to be stranger, I think. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I think in general, like having stuff at the fest this year that you don't get to see every year because we can do it virtual is going to be super exciting. Not just the international acts, but I think there's going to be a lot of like video uh, cameos and special presentations that uh, uh, are going to really make people excited. So um, I, I think people should tune in. This might be the year where if you've never liked experimental mu- music before, but you want to check it out, like this could be your end. This could be the way that you casually from your living room, like check out what we do and or you can keep the volume at a nicely reasonable level. It is an animal that we found uh, a very Maybe entire, the entire thing preserved in amber. And at first, uh, it, it's very small. And we said, this is the smallest dinosaur we have ever discovered. And that includes birds today. This is smaller than the smallest hummingbird that we know of. Uh, further research suggested maybe it wasn't actually a dinosaur maybe it was kind of a lizardy thing the people who acquired the amber discovered that this amber was being harvested through human rights abuses and the money that was made from selling it was being used to fund further human rights abuses so uh the museum that got the fossil and i don't they have since gone out and said, we're not buying amber from Minamar anymore. I don't know if that was because they just honestly didn't know or if it was, you know, because the scientific community put a lot of pressure on them. But either way, at least the blood amber will no longer be purchased from Minamar by that specific organization and if you go to minimar please don't buy any blood hammer
that's it. Well, does this mean we have to clean up everything now?
you like merch? Because at NorCal Noise Fest, it's time for Merch Madness. Look at all this merch for you to buy now. We got buttons. Look, they're all shiny. Logo patches. Cover those holes. We got masks. Cover your face, you filthy flavor rats. We got the awesome Avalanche Oscillator Pedal Kit. Tiny parts unsuitable for small children. This year's compilation CD. It fucking shreds. We got past year's compilation CDs. We have so many, nobody wants them. All orders accompanied by a highly collectible NorCal Noise Fest postcard. The show already happened. They're useless. Buy it all now at NorCalNoiseFest.square.site before it's all gone. Hi, I'm East Dam. I made this year's NorCal Noise Fest face masks. When you get yours, you'll notice that the knot is exposed. I left it that way so that you can untie it and retie it to make it looser or tighter so that the mask fits your face better. If the knot is already in a good spot, then just tighten it and you can shimmy it back into the fabric so that, you know, it looks nice. And then you bunch up this fabric on both sides and then put it on your face. And then when it's on, you'll notice that it fits good if there's no gaps. So no gaps and you're good. Greetings, noisy, wonderful people of the universe. I'm Bob Instagon. And I'm Austin Rich. And together we are Noise. 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 <laughs> <laughs>
Bastard, I know about the set at I'm gonna go get him some help, man. I'm gonna go back and ask ourselves in the past how to get to the set to be more noisy. Maybe get some help, alright? I'm gonna go back to the past, man. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. Whoa, hey, 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 whoa, whoa, I'm here, I made it, I made it, I made it, hey, greetings, my most excellent, wonderful self, it's wonderful to see you, and it's good to see you too, Austin, and hey, man, we're, I'm here with, uh, doing the thing, um, do you whoa, you're at Noise Fest? It, it, it looks like it's it's you, man. Dude, you're dude. It's me at Noise Fest, dude. Look at that excellent shirt. Dude, check out my new shirt. Whoa, nice shirt, bro. So what what, what do you need? Hey, I'm 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 here from the future. I've come from the future from that old old the NorCal Noise Fest 2020. There's actually cleaner air a couple weeks from now, and it's true, really. So, okay, so wait, you have a time machine? Dude, we have a time machine. Excellent! <laughs> right on. Dude, dude, this is awesome. Yeah. And so, uh, but I'm there. I'm they're here. I'm here now. I'm there now. And I'm here. We're having a bad time with the performance, man. And I need you guys just to help me. So, dude, what can we do to make the performance better? How can it be the most excellent performance for NorCal Noise Fest? You got to help. Well, I mean, it's pretty cool that you came back to, North, to Audio Waffle 69. Oh, 69, <laughs> dude! Hey. So, but, but, yeah, um, gosh, who, yeah, who can we get? We got a time machine. We should go back in time and get people from time to help. That's a good idea, man. I like that. Like, who should we get? Let's, like, get, who can we get that's the noisiest, coolest people that we know from time? You know, it would be really dope if they had some of that Frippertronics on stage, man, so they could go, and then the songs would go like, and then it'd be super dope, man. Ooh, that's a good idea. And then how about, how about we get, like, John Cage, and then we could just have big blocks of nothing. That's cool, I guess. Alright, um, who else? What other noise guys can we get? Uh, oh man, there's some like obvious ones. We could do like Zappa or get some of the residents. What about people that we know? We know some pretty noisy people too. How about like Bob Zone? Oh, yeah, let's get Bob Zone, man. Hey, let's call, let's get Bob Zone. Hmm? Hello? Bob! Dude! Hey, dude! Hey, dude, hey man, I'm, 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 I'm Bob Instagon. And I'm Austin Rich. And together we are Noise Stallion! Thanks for dropping hey, um, by, guys! Hey, <laughs> we're, we're trying to like help ourselves in the future by figuring out how to make our performance at NorCal Noise Fest awesome. Um, how can you help us to what will we what's a good idea from you dude so the book the power noise dude how do we make our noise the best noise fest set ever we are sitting here at the edge of our seats trying to do the best thing ever and we know that you have the perfect idea yeah dude it's most excellent i'm glad you asked because uh actually zone has done a number of noise shows and I know the secret. Mm. Whoa. I the right person, dude. <laughs> it, the key is, is to have a sturdy table. And you can't just go to Walmart or Target or somewhere and buy a cheap card table. It's just not going to work. The whole thing is just going to fall down and you're going to fail miserably. What you got to do is get a dining room table. Like, go on Craigslist, just get one as cheap as you can. Only thing is, it has to be at least 17 feet long and about 16 feet wide. Now, what you do with that, you, uh, you, you get it, you, you have to get it, you have to have a truck or something to move this because it's obviously very large. Well, I have and a heavy. truck, but I, it, doesn't have that, it doesn't have that long of a bed. This is perfect because you're going to have to load up your truck with some more stuff too to make it right. 
Okay, uh, the next thing you want to do is you want to go to uh, Home Depot and get uh, a couple of the bags of that uh, that uh, instant concrete stuff, that quickcrete. And then what you want to do is basically uh, submerge the bottom half of the table in concrete. And that, that way, when you're on stage, the table won't move anywhere. And you'll be able to have a nice, safe uh, noise show. Right on. That's, that's, that's killer, man. Whoa. 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 Okay. Uh, thanks, Bob. Thanks. Party on, dudes. Party on, dude. Be excellent. excellent. Be loud. <laughs> See ya later. Later. <laughs> Well, I guess that's not going to work, so uh, we need somebody else. What about, uh, I don't know, who, I don't know who else is noisy? Hmm. Let's see. Uh, well, you're pretty noisy. Uh, uh, you're pretty noisy, too. That's why we're noise stallions! stallions! <laughs> yeah! Uh, I don't know. What about Scott Generic? That guy's noisy. Uh, looks like he's a little bit busy right now. All right. Uh, um... I don't know, dude. You'll have to just remember that to make the best noise performance, you just really have to give it your all and be yourselves. And remember what Rufus always says, be excellent, be loud, and party on. Right on, dude. Yeah. I mean, just look at future Austin going over there. Like, he's just, like, ripping it up. You should just get back over there and join him so that he doesn't feel like he's alone. Yeah, dude, this is enough. Go back, back to where you're going. Oh, oh my gosh, okay. I've got it, I've got it. Are you ready? We'll do this, dude. I'm Hop Instagon. And I'm Austin Rich. And together we are Noise Stallions. <laughs> Okay.
Oh, hey. Wow. I think I got away from myself there. <laughs> Dude. I'm Bob Instagon. And I'm Austin Rich. And, and together, together we, we are... are... Noise. Noise Stop! Noise <laughs> People of NorCal Noise Fest for hanging out, paying attention. Thank you, NorCal Noise Fest. I want you to remember to be loud, be excellent to each other, and party on, dude!
Library of Music Landria is a non-profit musical instrument lending library serving the Sacramento region. Our lending, education, live music, and professional development programs break down barriers to musical exploration. Since COVID-19, we've had to suspend normal operations, but we remain committed to providing local musicians the resources they need for creative growth. Follow us on Facebook for online events, educational videos, and to stay tuned for our reopening. You can also support us on Patreon. With your help, Music Landria will be here for our community for years to come. Thanks, and enjoy the show.
and it's it's, it's not just for for boy 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 is either is either is boy is either boy is boy is either boy is boy is either boy is for not just and it's and it's not and it's and it's and it's not just for it's not just for boy and it's not and it's not just for not just for boy just for boy is just for boy is not just for not and it's not just for boy it's not just and it's not and it's not it's not it's 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 not Classical training certainly applies to the extent that I play the harp for my sets and that um, I write real compositions. But I also think that having classical music training helps even when you're making noise music because it helps you to understand something like the structure of compositions. So in spring of 2016, um, I drove 10 hours from Salt Lake City down to Los Angeles to see a performance by Author and Punisher. And it literally changed my life. That was when I started developing my gloves because at the time I was playing the guitar and I wanted something that would be able to accompany me almost automatically. That was my, my whole goal going into this was I wanted to create gear that would make it easy for me to make the kinds of noises that I want to make and I've accomplished that and it's amazing. <laughs> I never would have I never would have dreamed of building something like this even this time last year. It's something that I needed to spend all of this time developing my abilities before I was actually ready to do anything like that. I wanted to perform at NorCal Noise Fest um, basically as soon as I found out that it existed. Last year when I was looking at the lineup, it was amazing. It was like everybody that I was excited to see. And I didn't manage to make it out, which was tragic, but um, it's just incredible programming. They bring in the best people and I am genuinely honored and excited to be a part of it. In a way, I'm excited about the fact that it'll be streamed because it means that anybody around the world can tune in. Knowing how these events go, there's always such a wide variety of different people with different approaches, different ways of thinking about the music that they make, and I feel like it's going to be even weirder. I mean, everybody is running out of stuff to watch. And here are these artists who are 
working their asses off to create something for you and you know we're all still in quarantine and we want to put something out and still still have that contact with the outside world and have people experience this thing even if they can't even if they can't do it in person it's like the reason why you want to create things is for people to to feel it and for people to be to be a part of it
Hey, this is a PSA brought to you by Overdose of Catatonic. Let's say you're having a gender reveal party during this pandemic and you're stupid enough to light off fireworks and maybe people with COVID can't breathe even more. Maybe you should pick up one of these. A fire extinguisher it might help before you burn people and all the resources in the forest down. Get back to me, Overdose of Catatonic, if you got a problem with that. Fuck off. Hey kids, do you like merch? Because at NorCal Noise Fest, it's time for Merch, merch Madness. Madness. Look at all this merch for you to buy now. We got buttons. Look, they're all shiny. Logo patches. Cover those holes. We got masks. Cover your face, you filthy plague rat. We got the awesome Avalanche Oscillator Pedal Kit. Tiny part of suitable for small children! This year's compilation CD! It fucking shreds! We got past year's compilation CDs! We have so many, nobody wants them! All orders accompanied by a highly collectible NorCal Noise Fest postcard! The show already happened! They're useless! Buy it all now at NorCalNoiseFest.square.site before it's all gone! Sauropods are the long necky dinosaurs, uh, Brontosaurus, Brachiosaurus, Apatosaurus, Camarasaurus, Giraffe Titan, um, Nigerosaurus. There's a lot of them. Uh, because basically their whole thing was get really big and then no one will try to hurt you. That was a pretty successful plan for evolving and then being safe for a long time. So, uh, there was a paper that was published recently. We assumed long necky dinosaurs, sauropods, held their heads out like so, kind of, well, obviously like some of them went up, but m for the most part, there were these ones that were kind of the low browsing dinosaurs that would have their heads up like this. And this new paper is su suggesting maybe they actually would have held their heads up like this most of the time. Well, that's kind of interesting because uh, the theory that I had heard before was these uh, horizontal necky dinosaurs were basically kind of what they would do so that they would have be able to eat a lot because uh, you know plants aren't as nutritionally useful especially if you're really big as other kinds of food so they're eating all of this plant matter, 
Um, and, and what they would do until this new paper came out, we assumed, was they would just kind of stand and then eat everything in a circle around them and then go move on to the next bit and eat everything in a circle around them. And uh, now we don't know how, because if they were doing this, then they weren't low browsing, they were high browsing. Well, that's not what we thought. Uh, and, and we have to rethink why they would do that. And I don't know what that's going to mean in the future, but I'm very excited to hear.
Der Junge hat einen Kopf, das Mädchen hat einen Kopf, der Mann hat einen Kopf, die Frau hat einen Kopf, das Baby hat einen Kopf, die Taube hat einen Kopf, der Hund hat einen Kopf, die Katze hat einen Kopf, der Polizist hat einen Kopf, die Metzgerin hat einen Kopf, der Busfahrer hat einen Kopf, der Nachbar hat einen Kopf, die Nachbarin hat einen Kopf, die Verrückten hatten einen Kopf, die Verkäuferin hat einen Kopf, die Ameise hat einen Kopf, der Fisch hat einen Kopf, die Giraffe hat einen Kopf und die Nashörner haben auch einen Kopf. Alle haben einen Kopf. Die Dicken, die Dünnen, die Schwarzen, die Weißen, die Gelben, die Braunen, die Großen, die Kleinen, die Armen, die Reichen, die Fröhlichen, die Traurigen, die Gesunden, die Kranken, die Blinden, die Stummen, die Haarigen, die Kahlen und die Lustigen, die Wütenden und die Beweglichen und die Gebrechlichen haben einen Kopf. Alle haben einen Kopf. Manchmal reden die Köpfe, manchmal rauchen die Köpfe, manchmal trinken die Köpfe, manchmal weinen die Köpfe, manchmal schlafen die Köpfe, manchmal schreien die Köpfe, manchmal essen die Köpfe, manchmal nicken die Köpfe, manchmal schauen die Köpfe und manchmal denken die Köpfe, manchmal husten die Köpfe, manchmal rülpsen die Köpfe, manchmal staunen die Köpfe, manchmal raunen die Köpfe, manchmal fluchen die Köpfe, manchmal lachen die Köpfe, manchmal rollen die Köpfe. My name's Lob. I want to invite you to come out and join us for Sacramento Audio Waffle. Sacramento Audio Waffle, a gathering of noise, sound, visual experience that includes waffles. 
Uh, so, you know, you should join us. It happens every month on the third Sunday, the third Sunday of the month at noon Pacific time. That's when we do this thing, noon Pacific time. Uh, come out and join us for Sacramento Audio Waffles. Uh, for more information, go to norcalnoisefest.com slash audio waffle. That's norcalnoisefest.com slash audio waffle. We hope to see you there. It was an age of grim violence and gore-drenched savagery. An age of astonishing sorcery and sinister wizardry. No! It was the age of Grunk, the Smasher. You really are quite good at smashing, aren't you? It was also an age filled with many, many, many super foxy harem girls that Hella liked to dance. Like, a lot.